Welcome back to our video module on quantum mechanics. Thus far, we've been able to look at 3D models of the wave function for the Schrodinger's equation. We're able to separate them into radial and angular components and get a more nuanced feel of other quantum numbers like L and M. Today, we're going to take our first step into looking at potential profiles in three dimensions by introducing the Coulomb potential, which effectively is just a 1 over r potential. And I start to wonder, with the introduction of this potential into our equations, how does it affect our solutions? What happens to the Schrodinger's equation? What type of interesting characteristics do we start to see? Today, we'll be looking at the radial wave function's characteristics in a Coulomb potential profile in three dimensions. While we won't go into the full solution set, we will take a first look at how to think about this problem. First off, why even bring this up? Well, let's recall that when we looked at the infinite square well, we were learning the basic behavior of waves in a quantized energy state. Then we introduced ourselves to simple harmonic oscillators and saw some really interesting characteristics there, which allowed us to start to use operators. But we're looking at the Coulomb potential because this is the potential profile that mostly closely resembles the types of things we might see in an actual atomic structure. For instance, you can imagine in a hydrogen structure. And from our basic e &M, we should already know this equation where we're looking at a radial potential profile. To start off, we're going to go all the way back to our separation of variables discussion. And what we decided was that we could separate the wave function, which is a function of r, theta, and phi, into basically two functions. One is a radial function. The other is an angular function. One of the assumptions we had for the angular function was we had a potential profile that was radially symmetric. And in fact, the Coulomb potential is radially symmetric, so we should see no change to the angular solutions as a result of this potential profile, which is a really interesting concept, and I'd encourage you to wrap your head around that. This leaves me with using the potential profile only in the radial equation, where if we make the substitution from R to U, and I'd also like to point out I'm introducing the NL subscript to indicate that R and U are dependent on the NL quantum numbers. And in the equation using the U instead of R, we end up with a form of the Schrodinger's equation that's only defend, dependent on U. Now, of course, finding solutions in this form of this equation is a headache. However, if we make the substitution of kappa is square root of negative 2me over h bar, and before you get too concerned that there's a negative under the square root, remember that up here, the energy is always negative for the Coulomb interaction the way we've set it up here. And then finally, we make a solution that rho equals kr. So rho is some function of the energy in some sense times the radius. If we make this substitution, we end up with a manageable equation that we can do something with. And to give you an idea of where we're going, on the Coulomb graph, I'm going to go ahead and put down the actual energies that we end up seeing. Basically, you start off with fairly large jumps. And the closer we get up to uh, the top, the energy quantized states get closer and closer. And I'd encourage you to check out University of Colorado's FET simulations. They have some really interesting simulations of this potential profile in three dimensions. Well, there's a couple things we can learn from this equation before we even go any further. First, if we know that L is zero, in other words, we have no angular momentum term, so to speak, in the effective potential, this whole term will go to zero, which means we're only left with a one minus some constant over rho. A second interesting idea is what happens if rho goes to zero? Well, if rho goes to zero, this term's going to get really small, which means this term will go big. But this term right here is going to be even smaller, which this term is going to be much bigger, which will effectively mean that only this, the third term here, will actually matter. Now, on the other hand, what if happens if rho gets really big? If rho gets really big, this term is going to get big, which is going to push down 
the second term. But this term right here is going to be way bigger, which means the whole term will pretty much become negligible compared to this term. So in other words, we see some interesting characteristics if L is not equal to zero. We see some interesting characteristics if rho approaches zero and if rho approaches infinity. And this will be the foundation for identifying actual solutions. So we see different types of behaviors depending what's happening here. So in summary, this is our first time looking at an actual changing potential in three dimensions. We're looking at the Coulomb potential, which closely reflects the actual scenario in a hydrogen atom. And we saw that it is purely introduces purely changes to the radial component of the wave equation. With a couple of substitutions, we're able to identify a relatively simple second order differential equation, and we're able to see that the influences of different components of the equation lead to different types of behaviors for the final solution. Hopefully this video gives you a little bit of an idea of the Coulomb potential in three dimensions and prepares you for diving into math, the mathematical solutions for this equation. Thank you, and I'll see you next time on further explanation of 3D models of quantum behavior.